Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Okay, so I'm working on a 20 by 20 inch canvas. And what I'm doing is I'm just taping off some of the sections on the canvas because I want to first of all concentrate on the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some blue tones and some white to create a pattern within the middle. And then what I was thinking is once it's dry, I will peel back the tape and on each edge, I will do almost like a chaos Dutch pour. What I'll do is I will list all the colours that I'm using in my description below. So check that out. I'm also adding some white just so I can make some of those blues a little bit lighter. And what I'll do is I'm just going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to mix those colours together. And I'm literally just going to go from side to side with my paintbrush. Now there is quite a lot of paint on here, but what I can do as I go along is wipe some of that paint off on the side. I'm literally just going from left to right, just covering that middle. And then what I'll do is once I've covered the base, I will then take a clean paintbrush and just take any of the excess paint off of that middle. So what I'm going to do, once it's dry, I will peel back that tape and then I will start my Chaos Dutch Pour technique. I'm just going to not forget to paint my sides. So I'm not worried about where you can see where there's white on, the, on each edge of the canvas because that's where I will layer my fluid paint and blow out through the Chaos Dutch Pour technique. But as you can see, I've just taken that clean paintbrush and I'm just going over the top of it just to take any excess paint or lumps from that surface, just so it's very smooth. So when I go to do the fluid part of the painting, it has a smooth kind of texture for the paint to still glide across. And as I step back and just have a look at the overall color that's within the middle, I'm choosing to add a little bit of more of the dark tone blue on the base just so I have an overall picture that I'm trying to create. Okay, so moment of truth, it's fully dry. So now what I'm going to do is just peel the tape back and you'll see that hopefully I have a clean line across the piece. Not actually too worried whether it was a clean line because I'm going to make sure when I do the fluid part of this painting that it's not a, a straight line all the way across. I'm going to ensure some of the fluid paint does mix on that edge so it's not so sharp. And it's here that I'm going to layer my fluid paint and blow it across. I'm going to blow it down and then across and back again. So let's start. I'm going to take my tones. So I'm using the same colours that I've used for the middle, but I've made them more fluid and I've mixed the paint with just water. So this is the Dutch pour or the Chaos Dutch pour element that I'm adding to this painting. So once I've layered all of my colours onto the base, I will then take my hairdryer and blow out the paint across each edge. But I'll also work some of that paint into the middle section just so that edge isn't so sharp and it blends in a little bit better. And I think what I'm trying to create is almost like a, a cave effect. It's like I'm in a cave and I'm looking out to sea or I'm looking out to mountains and the sky. But we'll, we'll see if that's how I managed to create that concept. But it's almost using the same kind of technique as I would if I was doing like a wave. So yeah, I'm layering the paints first and then I will blow it out. So remember, I'm just using paint and water for this part and it's one part paint to one part water. I'm using good brands, so the binder within that paint allows me to use that much water. And I'm also going to add a silver because I'm hoping that the metallic silver will help create a little bit of cells and lacing. I don't necessarily want too much on this piece, but I want a little bit of that element to add in. So by adding that silver, I'm hoping that's what it's going to create. I'll just add a little bit of the silver to the top. I don't want to forget that edge. Just all the way across, filling in all my gaps. And then what I'll do is I will torch it just before I blow it out. Just to get rid of those excess bubbles that I don't want within that creation. Okay, so let's blow this creation out.
Okay, so this is wet look version. So I'll take you in for a close up. I love the effect that using the blow dryer can really have on the paint when it's so fluid. And what I really like about this creation is obviously I painted the middle first and let that dry. And the part in the middle goes from side to side. And then the fluid part on the edge, that's more of a chaotic look. That, that's being used with the, the blow dryer. And it almost creates that effect that I was hoping for where I'm inside something and I'm looking out. Let's now show you the dried version. And guys, I'm really, really happy with how it's dried. I love that middle part where it goes from one side to the other and then the edges go in completely different direction. And I think that's what makes it have that kind of 3D feel and that 3D look effect. I'd love to know what you think. So drop me some comments below. Let me know what you think. And should I do this again, but maybe with a different color palette? So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for your support as always. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great week, everyone, and take care. See ya. Bye.